Welcome back to Under Your to my people, and today I'm going to go into some of the details uh, what to know or what you need to know before becoming a ramp agent, especially here in the year of 2021. Uh, first and foremost, uh, right now is hiring is very minimum, of course, due to the current to the current you know standing of the airline industry. Uh, the second thing is. Uh, also with 2021, uh, the mask wearing. Um, if you don't want to wear a mask, uh, probably not a good idea to go in the airline industry. Uh, the ramp, they, they're, they're not really too hard on the ramp. Uh, if you can stay out of the way, whatever, you can probably get away with it without wearing a mask, without someone coming to tell you something. Uh, but again, again, it's not a law to wear a mask anywhere. Uh, but once you are on the aircraft or doing something, then like if people see you on there without a mask, then they may have questions, like customers may question, say, hey, why, why do they have to wear a mask or not? But that's a whole nother issue. But besides that, hiring, the hiring freezes and the mask thing and everything, uh, what else you need to know? Okay, first and foremost, uh, you're gonna be outside, of course. You're going to be outside, working around, you know, pushing, pulling, throwing uh, bags, you know. You're going to be picking up cargo from mail to money packages to uh, HRs, uh, which is human remains. We do ship human remains, um, you know, because people need to go to where they need to go for their funeral or wherever, you know. Uh, what else? Uh, you mean you have flowers? You mean like you can have anything as your cargo on the plane? If, if it fits, it ships. Uh, if they want to pay for it, you know, whoever. A uh, bunch of lab, a bunch of lab uh, testing kits and results like that. Uh, animals, you know, you'll you'll be having your hands on anything uh, that you can really think of. Uh, second off, so. Or if you're in a hot climate, cold climate, you're gonna be. You need to, you know, if you don't like being outside, probably not the best option for you. you probably want to look into getting a, becoming a gay agent uh, if you don't like being outside. Uh, but outside, if you love being outside, you know, you're you're on the right track. Uh, the second thing, the third thing is, um, it's not just like a nine to five job or anything. The shifts, I mean that I know of that I, I've worked personally, it's like a 4 a.m. to 12.30, uh, maybe at 8 or 10 to about 4 or 5, 6, and then a 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 4 o'clock to 12 o'clock shift, because even though it's not a, the airport isn't technically a 24-hour operation, uh, most of the time you're always going to have someone there interchanging and changing in, coming in, come, going out. Uh, but due to the cut schedule, you may not have, you know, the late and the midnight hour people there because you, the planes are arriving at an uh, earlier time than normal. The runs uh, are arriving and resting overnight. Our aircraft are arriving at another time, an earlier time now. Um, also, during ramp agent, you're, you're going to be, you know, doing the bags, you know, going to be wing walking the planes. Uh, you may uh, end up being called for cabin service to clean the planes, whatever. Uh, but if you have, like, issues with, like, cleaning, whatever, I think they can make you slide with that. Uh, driving, if you know how to drive, I think driving, uh, a driver's license is required. If you don't have a driver's license, uh, they'll just probably... Probably not going to be a first look to hire without a driver's license, but if you don't have a driver's license, you probably can't drive and you'll just be loading bags the whole day. But you'll be driving carts, you'll be driving trucks, vans, whatever, in and out to the back room, to cargo, uh, just all around the airport, depending on how big your airport is. Um, another thing is, the, the bigger airports, you have a better chance to be on... Uh, the actual company team, like a, a Delta, United, Southwest, or American agent. Um, those are like the big four airlines. I'm not. Sh I, I think JetBlue and Spirit are both contracting for uh, down 
uh, Below Wing ACS, Airport Customer Service Agents. Um, I think the best company to, if you want to be just an employee, uh, is probably going to be Southwest. Uh, Southwest has a, a pretty good starting pay. Um, you know, overall, I hear pretty good things about Southwest for the pilots, to the gay agents, flight attendants, uh, ramp agents. I, I hear that they treat their people pretty well, and pay compensation is, you know, pretty decent as well. Uh, the second and third, probably close and close, uh, Delta United. Um, me personally, if you live in a, if you south, live in the southeast, you probably want to go Delta because it's more of abundance there. If you live like on from Texas to the West Coast, and then like if you like live in Chicago and Newark, you know, probably want to go United uh, because uh, each city has their own, you know, a uh, higher, you know, higher business airline, whatever. So United's hubs are San Francisco. Uh, IAH, Houston, uh, you know, you got O'Hare, you got Newark, and uh, where else you got? Denver, uh, Delta's hubs are LA, uh, LaGuardia, JFK, Detroit, Minneapolis, Atlanta. Uh, for Southwest, you got Houston Hobby, um, really all of Texas. Uh, where else you got, you know, California, some, some there in a little bit, a little bit, uh, Baltimore, I believe, Orlando, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Uh, but mostly Southwest is just mostly, uh, all national flights, no international flights other than just the islands. Um, American, you got Dallas, Fort Worth, you got, um, I think LA possibly. You got Charlotte, you know, of course, those places. JetBlue, you know, you got Miami or Fort Lauderdale, wherever it is. Um, Newark, possibly. Spirit, I, I'm not sure if they technically have a hub, but they're, pretty, they're growing pretty big. Well, not really growing, but they are pretty big in, you know, like, the most more prominent uh, industry cities. Uh, but so if you don't get on with the actual airline itself, like a Delta Airlines or United Airlines, uh, if you live in a smaller city or at that airport location, is contracting, uh, it's not good. Contracting contractors for like United Ground Express, technically not that big of a contract, like that big of a fall off, but at, at the end of the day, it's not United. Uh, then you got DGS or Delta Global Services, whatever for Delta, or now I think they call it Unify. Uh, then you got Envoy for American. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. On it, uh, Unify and Envoy, uh, they're not gonna pay you at all. Or DGS and Envoy, they're not gonna pay you that much. Um, I mean, unless you're like a manager or something. Even then, you're you're way below the industry standard of pay. Uh, with DGS, like you're not even gonna, you you have to pay for your flights if you want to like fly as a non-ref, unless you figure out how to, you know, uh, build a relationship with the gay agents and you can give them your PBR number and say, hey, I'm going to go here, here, and here, and then if they're cool enough, they won't charge you anything. Envoy, uh, you still do get to fly. Uh, but the pay isn't that great, and you're not unionized. Well, you may be unionized, I'm not sure. Um, but pay is definitely below standards from like the American Airlines standards. And, um, yeah, just, con just contracting in, in general is not that great. But with American, you, you list for your number of flights from, like, you get us like 24 hours. I'm not sure how many hours you get ahead of time, but whoever lists first gets there first, like from what I've been told. Uh, what else? I mean, you got your bag room. You got, you, after you're on the ramp, you're wing walking. You got cabin service. Uh, you may just have like some little small tasks to do. So just clean up such and such, clean up the ramp, you know, keep it tidy. Uh, take stuff upstairs or whatnot. Maybe help a passenger. I like helping passengers. Uh, you know, you'll be handling 
Um, basically all type of packages, all type of bags. You may have bikes come down, skis, snowboards, uh, surfboards, uh, firearms, anything, anything. Uh, but you definitely need to be in physical shape. Uh, physical shape is, you know, a plus. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to reject you for being a little bit overweight or not, but if you're already in physical shape, that will be good for you. Um, if, if, of course, you like being outside, um, rain, sleet, snow, 9 degrees, 10 degrees, you are still be working. And you're going to be having people, when you're out there on the ramp, you're going to be having people look at you, look at you from the plane, look at you from the a glass where the passengers are waiting to board the plane. You're going to have the pilots watching you, the flight attendants watching you, your supervisors, the, the Delta, the, the agents watching you. Um, you know, it, it's kind of cool, you know. All eyes are on you. All eyes are on you because at the end of the day, even though the ramp agents don't get that much, you know, praise or whatever, uh, they're the last people, and first and last people who bring and send out that plane so it all comes down to them really them and the pilots hand in hand um and of course the gay agents they do their thing you know uh, most of the time they have an easy job other than like delays or anything but yeah you could you could be loading from like a, a small rj plane 40 bags in the bin that's another thing the bins i mean the bins you gotta stoop down you got you know, be on your knees, some knee pads. Uh, you're gonna be having to, to move, move and maneuver. And if you, for me personally, it took me about two weeks to you know get everything done, packed, and get up to the speed what you need to be. Cause the speed, like, in busy times you may have a hundred bags to load in less than thirty minutes. And then you got within in that 30 minutes, if they're late or something, you got offload and then load it right back, right back up and then send the plane out. And then if you're at a busy airport or I'm not sure how, if shorter staff, you may be out there for six hours at a time. I know like in busy, busy times last year, uh, BC before Corona, I mean, we were, I was working 12 hour shifts out there at least uh, four five hours at a time, come in, get a drink, go get a little snack, try to eat eat while I'm out there or whatnot. You're not supposed to eat out, the, out there, but if you're hungry, get hungry. And didn't get a full break, you know. So, yeah, you could be working six-hour shifts, eight, 12, 10-hour shifts. They usually don't let anyone work over 12-hour shifts unless, like, you are taking up a shift for someone else. Uh, but, yeah, that's all you really need to know, just come to work. Uh, just show up on time, be ready to work. And, the, and then another thing, once people learn that you're working with the airline, they're going to start bombarding with questions. They're going to start smooth talking you. You're going to be getting phone calls from any people you haven't heard from in a while. And say, hey, can, can uh, y'all have like flight discounts or something or a buddy pass or something like that, you know? Me and my friend, I'm trying to go here, I'm trying to go there. And to be to be simple, uh, you just say no. Uh, no, you don't have that. You haven't been working there long enough to be getting those type of stuff. You don't know any connections at this point, because uh, they're 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 gonna. I've heard someone that that was giving buddy passes or whatever had them listed on their flight privileges, and the person was acting a fool on the flight, and they end up taking that person off, and then end up firing the person who was listed as the actual employee. So just be careful who with uh, you have on your past list. That they will come back to you and, you know, ask you a couple questions, especially like a recurring thing. So that's all you really need to know. Uh, it's fun, it's fun. Um, definitely if, if you know anyone who works with a particular airline, uh, hit them up, give them a call or, or text, ask for a reference. If you can find anyone hiring at this time, uh, but yeah, that's that's the main thing to be worried about. Uh, anyone hiring at this time, and if you were to be hired, just know that you will be on the first to be furloughed because you have the least seniority. But at the smaller smaller airports, whatever, uh, you probably could luck up somehow. You just gotta jump on it right quick, 
and you know list for a job you can just search search on your particular airport just search search in your airport code so if you live in ATL just search ATL uh, ramp agent jobs you live in Houston IAH or HU HOU ramp agent jobs LAS the same thing BWI whatever whatever your airport code is city airport ramp agent jobs and, and, and even also you may have like a private private uh, hangers that may be one of higher airports uh, higher uh, aircraft um, ramp agents uh, so yeah um, hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll try to do a couple more videos at the actual airport, but due to the fact that business is so slow and it's just, you know, can't really, I could, uh, it's just kind of like dull content, you know, but I'll be trying to get something out to y'all for about next Wednesday or so. Um, give y'all a look at the 737-900 walk around tour, go over the specs of the thing. Uh, yeah, hasta luego, gracias, thanks for watching.